before like starting off with the C programming, it is very important for us to understand like what is a computer and how computer have evolved over the period of time. Fundamentals of computing, which is like the historical perspective of early computers. So we'll just see here, like how the computers have evolved from the period. So the generations of computers have been divided into five generations. The first one is the first generation computers, second generation, third, fourth, and fifth, and so on. Uh, so various uh, technological changes have happened from the first generation till the last generation. And today we are in the fifth generation of computers. So we'll try to see each and every generation. So we'll try to see each and every generation in detail and how the computational capacity have been improved in various generations. So this is the first generation of computer, like where literally a computer started evolving, uh, which is from 1940 to 1956. We say this era is considered to be the first generation of computers. And the technology that has been used in the first generation of computers, as you can see. Okay, so as you can see is a vacuum tube. Let us try to understand what is meant by a vacuum tube. Uh, you can see here in the slide, like there is a vacuum tube here. So the vacuum tube acts like a switch. Okay, so what is it? A vacuum tube acts like a switch. So the capacity of uh, what is the functionality of this switch is that it creates electrons. So we all know that the flow of electrons is electricity. So this vacuum tube create electrons and then it decides like whether to send these electrons or not to send these electrons. If there is flow of electrons, we consider it to be one. And if there is no flow of electrons, we consider it to be zero, okay? So whatever we talk in computers, we say that everything is binary. Binary means that anything that is stored inside the computer is in terms of zeros and ones. Okay, so anything that is stored up in computer is stored as zero and one. That's it. Okay, so this vacuum tube used to act like a switch where it generates some electrons and when there is flow of ele electrons, we consider it to be one and if there is no flow, we consider it to be zero. So the technology in the first generation computers were these vacuum tubes. Okay, so these vacuum tubes were used to build the circuit and the language that the first generation computer used is called as the machine language. Why do we call it as a machine language is that the internal computer understands only zeros and ones. Okay, so the computer can understand, the computer can understand only zeros and ones. So the language used is machine language. Okay, but today we are using C language, Java language, then we are using Python language. So we have Rust, we have Ruby, we have many other languages that have been evolved today. But what was the language that was there in the olden days in the first generation computer is the binary language, which is considered to be the machine language. Okay, so there is a memory here for the first generation computers and the memory is nothing but the magnetic drums. You guys might be wondering that what is, whether there is a monitor for the first generation computer. There is no monitor for the first generation computer. Then how do you give the input to the computers and how do you get the output from the computers in the first generation computer? We will try to understand. So there is no monitor, right? So there is no monitor. And how do you give the input to the computer? So the input to the computer is given using these punch cards. So there is a storage over here, which is considered to be a punch cards. So the punch cards, as the name itself is saying that you just need to punch something. Okay, so what we'll punch over here is, we'll be punching holes on the card. Okay, so say for example, so say for example, hello. Uh, so say for example, we have this punch cards where we are trying to uh, put some holes in it. So say for example, this is your punch card. So say for example, this is your punch card. And at some specific locations, we'll be punching holes, okay? So wherever there is a hole, we consider it to be one. 
and wherever there is no hole, we consider it to be zero. Okay, so we'll consider it to be zero. So after preparing all these punch cards, so the programmers over here, so we are calling okay. the software engineers okay. today, right? So the software engineers okay. today are considered to be the programmers. So these programmers used to, these programmers used to prepare the punch cards. Okay, so they used to prepare these punch cards and these punch cards are fed into the computer. Okay, so these punch cards are fed into the computer. And the computer used to process these punch cards and then the computer used to give the output. Okay, so the, the computer gives you the output. Now, the computer will give you the output. Okay, so now how is the output given? Okay, so how is the output given? As I already told you that there is no monitor like how we are seeing today, we have monitor screens, right? So we don't have monitors in the first generation computer. There is no monitors in the first generation computer. So what happened over here is that how is the output given? Okay, output Ella is Tundi. So output is given in terms of a paper with a printout which is taken from the printers. Okay, so printers used to give the output. So there is no monitor. And another interesting thing that you need to observe is that the processing capability of the computer, the processing capability of the computer is like it is, it can only process few KBs. Okay, so few KBs means that only some kilobytes of uh, data it can process. And the size of the computer, if you see, it's like very massive. The size of the computer is massive. You know, like it's the size of the room. So today we see like palm computers, today we see laptops, today we see like very compact size of computing uh, technology today. But in the first generation of computer, the size of the computer is like room sized. Okay, so this is another interesting thing that we can see. And then the processing capacity of the CPU, if you just see here that the speed of the computer is very slow, okay, compared to today. Okay, so comparing to today's type of computing uh, computers that we have, like in the first generation of computers, like the computing capacity was very slow, like it's milliseconds per operation. So one operation, if you just consider like an operation, so what is meant by an operation? So I'll just get into the basics of it. Coming to one operation, so it could be addition is considered to be one operation. So, so I'm saying addition. So say for example, in the first generation computer for performing addition, if it is taking two seconds, okay, so maybe it is taking two seconds to perform addition, but in today's generation, it will take some like maybe one by hundred or thousands of like milliseconds, one by thousandth of the milliseconds. So that fast today, the computation is happening. So uh, uh, that that's again one thing like we can observe in the first generation computers. And then if you see like, a uh, lot of heat is produced in the computers. Um, so that time, um, so the computer used to become really overheated and then they have to stop all these operations and then again restart it once the computer comes to the room temperature and so on. So these were all the uh, overheads or you can say like these are all the side effects of uh, the first generation computer. And then you can see like the reliability, what is meant by reliability. So reliability and ANT. Reliability and trust. Okay, so when I try to give some input, whether the computer will be able to give me the proper output or the correct output or not. Okay, so correct output or not, whether the computer is going to give, we say like it's reliable. So can I rely on somebody or can I trust somebody? Is like like the first generation computers are frequently they give frequent the failures. Because everything is mechanical here. Today, if you see like the computers that we are seeing here, everything is electronics, okay? But in the olden days, in the first generation of computers, like everything is mechanical. It is like there, there were a lot of mechanical device parts or mechanical devices in the computer. But today, everything is electronics. So because there was mechanical uh, parts in the computer, so they were prone to frequent failures and so on, okay? So... But that was really very tedious. Why, you know, like when I give the input, so um, 
uh, when I expect the output, as I said, like the output, there is no monitor. So the output used to come in the printers, right? So printers used to give the input and uh, used to give the output. And if there is any error in the code, we used to get the wrong output. So what the programmers or today's software engineers have to do would have done that time is that again they have to punch the cards okay so again they have to punch the cards and then give them as the input into the uh, machines okay so that tedious it used to be rectification of the errors or fixing of the bugs was also not so easy in the first generation of computers okay and then uh, example computers at that time were electronic numerical integrator and computer which is also called as ENIAC. And then you have UNIVAC, which is Universal Automatic Computer. So these were some of the examples uh, that you can see uh, where the first generation computer. So if you just look at some um, analogy, um, so it could be like the how human beings have evolved. Today we, we are... Um, uh, so we are civilized human beings, right? So in the olden days, how human beings used to be in the olden days, like human humans used to be like um, uh, they they were very raw, like they they don't know how to bathe or they don't know how to uh, talk or they don't know um, the importance of hygiene or they, it was like considered to be Stone Age where they 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 used to eat the raw raw meat or with, without even cooking. So eventually, what happened is like as years went by as decades passed by or as the generations went by um, man has become more matured and man has become more um, intelligent and then um, man started cooking and you can just view this to be like that so you can say like the first generation of computer is considered to be the stone age of computers uh, where the machines were very huge and then the processing capability of the machine is very slow and then the operations that the first generation computer was capable of is like it is capable of doing arithmetic operations so we know like what are the arithmetic operations the board mass okay so what is board mass like we have the bracket then division multiplication addition and subtraction and off and all that so all these operations are uh, done by the first generation computers along with this like it also used to uh, do the weather predictions okay so weather predictions uh, it can do and also it can do some statistical analysis so statistical analysis if you just compare it is not the statistical analysis that we are seeing today uh, today we have uh, really um, massive computers with the quantum computing and so on so not that statistical analysis i'm talking about in the first generation the statistical analysis were, were very simple like doing the average or um, just like that okay so finding out the mean and that basic statistical analysis um, the computers were capable of and so that's it. So this is about the first generation of computers. Uh, do you have any questions in this slide? If it's clear, then I'll move on to the next slide. So any questions? Okay. So if you just uh, take a look at this data size table, so how the uh, measurement in computer yeah, happens or how the data is represented in computers, if you just look at it, like bit is considered to be one bit okay so what is meant by one bit one bit is considered to be either zero or either one this is the smallest unit of the computer so if you combine eight bits together you call it as a byte okay and you can see how the measurement is represented if it is a bit like it is a lowercase b and if it is byte it is a uppercase b okay fine so if you combine one zero four bytes then it become one kilobyte okay right so what can you do with one kilobyte one kilobyte of data means that it is one small text file it's, it's, a, it's a very small text file so how the data is represented in the first generation computer and how much data it can process you can understand like it is very very small one small text file only, like that much of data only it can pass. Today, if you are taking one selfie, for example, one selfie is like in megabytes. Right? Not only the arithmetic uh, operations that the first generation computers can do, 
it also can find out the trajectory for the atomic bombs okay so trajectory for atomic bombs so if i have to put a, a, a for example there is a city a and there is a city b and say i want to put an atom bomb to b so i just need to calculate the correct trajectory so that it lands on city b not on city c okay so if the, this trajectory is wrong i want to uh, put the bomb on b but what happens is like it, it goes to c and this is not what i want okay so to calculate the correct trajectory of uh, the bombs and all that they used to use this first generation computers and not only that like it also uh, is used for predicting the weathers and all that like simple calculations um, this first generation computers were used for. Yeah. Clear? Yeah, clear. Okay, fine. Shika, is it clear to you? Yes. Okay, it's so we'll clear. move on to the, yeah, we'll move on to the next one. So the second, uh, as I said, like this, this again is the data size table. So let me talk about MB. So if you just look at MP, like it is 1024 KB is equal to 1 MB. As I already told you, so you can take a look at, uh, look over here that, um, so one minute of MP3 um, uh, is considered to be 1 MB, okay? So again, like if you say like 1024 MB is equal to gigabytes, we say GB, right? So which is like equal to 200 songs or like one movie, like which is one G. And then next is terabyte. Uh, so you can see like, next is terabyte. So you can see like the terabyte, you can measure uh, the terabyte as 1024 GB. And it is like equal to like 250 HD movies or 3 million photos. So that much capacity is uh, one TB, okay? So then is petabyte. Petabyte is 1024 terabytes. Again, like, the amount of data that can fit into one petabyte, one PB, is the data used by large data centers. Large data centers, like, um, like which could be like, um, you can say banking, which is like world across the globe, like there is a banking system. So all the data collected from the bank customers, which, which is like very big bank and all that. So all that data is uh, considered to be a large data center, all that data, so like you can say like it, which is one petabyte and so on. Next is hexabyte. Hexabyte is like 1024 PB, like which is like equal to entire internet traffic in a day. Okay, so if you just have to put, collect all the entire internet traffic in a day, then that will come across like one EB. Okay, so then we have the zettabyte, uh, which is like one ZB, ZB. So which is equal to 1024 EB and which is like the cloud, global cloud storage scale and all that is considered to be one ZB. And next is Yottabyte, so which is considered to be one zero two four ZB. Like you can say like it's the wild future uh, level data, uh, NASA dreams of this. And so uh, what's the example of that is that today, where are we? Like how much data is collected today is like we are in the ZB or the ZB era. Uh, so the data that we have, uh, you can measure it in Z. And uh, what is uh, data byte? So like in uh, 2030 uh, or by 2032, like we'll be reaching to this era and the entire global data will be equal to data byte, okay, which is YB. Uh, so as of now, we haven't reached that YB, uh, but uh, we are in ZB and in by 30 or 32, the entire global data will be equal to one Y. Okay, right. Uh, so this is regarding the uh, data size table. 